Hello everyone, myself Dr. Pankaj Kharade and today I am going to discuss about rehabilitation of maxillary defects due to carcinoma and mucormycosis. We all know that uh, there are various etiologies for maxillary defects. So it can be congenital like left lip and palate. It might be acquired due to surgical resection of tumor or, or it might be traumatic or certain infections like mucormycosis or aspergillosis may lead to these maxillary defects. Before few months, we came across uh, so many uh, maxillary defects due to post-COVID mucormycosis. Uh, then uh, these maxillary defects, they can be drug-induced, drug like a drug uh, in the category of cocaine, or it might be because of uh, inflammatory conditions like vagmus, granulomatosis, or midland granuloma. These are uh, various maxillary defects uh, depending on the extent of uh, maxillectomy and also the location of maxillectomy. So we can classify these maxillary defects accordingly. Now this is uh, a case of uh, mucormycosis which was uh, surgically treated and the primary closure was uh, tried, but uh, it was not properly achieved and you can see uh, that there is a difficulty in prosthetic rehabilitation because uh, you need to uh, totally de uh, depend on the residual maxillary teeth as there is no uh, defect available which can be used as a retentive measure and for such kind of defects you uh, can fabricate these plates where incorporation of uh, soft tissue line of these silicon materials can be done to make them more stable and retentive. Now this was a case uh, which was surgically resected due to mucormycosis. And uh, you can see that the bone is not available in that uh, region. So again, uh, you need to uh, use the remaining hard pellet and these uh, abutments uh, for rehabilitation. Again, similar case where the maxillary resection has been carried out. Now, uh, this is another case where uh, the maxilla was initially infected due to mucormycosis and the lesion got extended into mandible. And for these kind of cases, uh, composite resection of maxilla as well as mandible is carried out. So it's a very challenging situation where you have to rehabilitate uh, the maxillary defect and along with that maxillary defect, there is deviation of the mandible which needs to be corrected. So uh, you have to fabricate a composite prosthesis where uh, there is combination of obturator as well as guide flange prosthesis. Now here you can see that uh, after the section of mandible, there is, uh, as well as maxilla, there is Christmas due to the surgery. And for this purpose, you have to use uh, certain measures like uh, exercise program or physiotherapy so that the mouth opening can be improved over a certain period and then impression can be made to fabricate uh, obturator. So this is a hollow bulb obturator which was fabricated. You can see that uh, the hollowness will make it light and more acceptable. And once the patient will get accustomed to this prosthesis, we can add guide flange to this prosthesis. Now there are several factors which can affect the prosthetic prognosis like volume and location of post-surgical bony anatomy, mouth opening, availability of abutment teeth, size of the defect, radiation therapy, and neuromuscular control of the patient. So availability of teeth is very important factor and uh, for this uh, you uh, need to maintain coordination with your surgeon so that uh, maximum abutment teeth can be preserved. Now here you can see uh, that uh, few root stumps and abutment teeth were preserved and these uh, root stumps can be utilized for uh, placing certain attachment which can be used for fabrication of this definitive prosthesis. Now incorporation of skin graft is very important because they will make uh, the tissue in contact with prosthesis more resistant and uh, apart from that they will prevent granulation of the resected margin and uh, because once it uh, starts granulating or once it will uh, be left to granulate it will lead to poorly keratinized nasal mucosa, which is not resistant and uh, it will affect the prognosis of your prosthesis. Now, while comparing uh, the surgical and prosthetic rehabilitation, 
for a smaller defect you can uh, certainly go for surgical rehabilitation but if the defect is very large then you have to decide wisely whether to whether to go for surgical resection or prosthetic surgical rehabilitation or prosthetic rehabilitation because the masticatory function will be very uh, difficult to restore once you will uh, go for surgical rehabilitation now uh, this is uh, a case where we had fabricated a uh, cast metal framework obturator and uh, you can see that the framework was tried and then the jawlation was recorded and after trying uh, we uh, fabricated this hollow bulb obturator so that the acceptance of the process can be better and you can incorporate these uh, characterization pigments so that the aesthetics can be enhanced now uh, you can see the difference before and after positive treatment another case where uh, resection of maxilla was done in completely dangerous patient so similar uh, technique was utilized and hollow bulb obturator was fabricated now this is another case where uh, resection of maxilla and this maxillary defect was extending into the orbital region so the size of bulb was relatively large so we had to fabricate this hollow bulb obturator and you can see the characterization has been done to uh, match or uh, to improve the aesthetics because this patient was having melanin pigmentation this is another case uh, where we had very uh, we came across very small defect and uh, we had to use uh, very precise mechanism so we used this uh, semi precision attachments and here you can see that the process was written with the help of these attachments then this is one more case where we use semi precision attachments and this bar and clip mechanism was used to retain and uh, improve the stability of this maxillary obturator again another case where hollow bulb obturator was fabricated and you can see the difference after prosthetic rehabilitation when the defect is extending into the soft palate you need to uh, go for two stage impression technique and in larger defect you can use this press strut technique or magnets can be incorporated or this hdv silicone can be used so this is another case where a cast partial obturator was fabricated for soft palate defect as well you can go for this cast partial uh, frameworks this is another case where we had used a two stage impression technique to restore the soft palate defect you can also go for uh, maxillary uh, grafting with fibula and they can be restored with implants so coming to conclusion prosthetic rehabilitation helps to reinstate facial appearance speech and masticatory function thus improves patient's quality of life in patients with maxillary defects thank you